my dear friends god has given us this 20th sunday in ordinary times when i reflect around god's word today i come to this realization in every seed there is life when the seed tries to fulfill its purpose of becoming a tree the ants like to eat up that seed but the seed has to continue to live on protect itself if the seed is sprout, sprouting it out the birds will come and eat it up but the seed has to continue its life when it grows the cattle can come and eat up that plant away but if the seed manage to move away from the ants the birds the cattle it will become a huge tree and the same tree will begin to give life to those who try to finish it off it will become home for the ants it will become nest for the birds it will become shade and food for the cattle yes when the seed keeps up its essence its power it fulfills god's purpose in our life also god has chosen each one of us in his image and goodness he has sent us into the world for a purpose for a mission as god has brought life to the world as jesus died and destroyed sin and brought salvation to the sinners we also have to join with jesus to give life and salvation wherever we are in today's first reading we find jeremiah he heard the word of god he is the giver of life he is the giver of salvation of god he knows the people of israel have sinned he knew the mission of god that they should go to babylon and they should be trained there in babylon through suffering and struggle they should understand that they a sin has led them to babylon in their struggle it is only god can save them in babylon the enemies will be treating them cruelly but if they call upon the lord they will experience the power of god so this was the mission of god to send the people of israel to babylon to know the living god who loves them who cares for them who is with them so jeremiah told the people we have to go to babylon and the babylonians are going to come and destroy us if we don't go with them all the all that we have will be destroyed he heard the voice of god he communicated it because the word of god became fire for him he says that i could not keep this fire with me that's what he says in jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9 it became fire in his heart in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 says lord put the word in the mouth of jeremiah jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14 says god's word in the mouth of jeremiah became fire and when he spoke the people became like wood they heard it and they responded it yes that's why the bible says jeremiah 23 verse 29 the word of god was like a fire in the mouth of jeremiah he gave the word of god courageously but the king sadakia who is going to be destroyed by babylonians he didn't want to listen to the word of god so the rulers 
they took Jeremiah and threw him into the pit. And they wanted him to die instead of listening to the word of God. Through the word of God, the fire, instead of purifying their lives, they destroyed the one who brought the fire, God's word to them. They thought they can simply destroy anybody as they wish. But they did not know the man who carries the fire of God, carries the word of God in his heart, cannot be destroyed. God himself will turn into good. Yes. The rulers took him and put Jeremiah in the pit. But God raised up a man and he came. Ebedah Melech spoke to the king and he lifted up Jeremiah. We listen. The rulers caught Jeremiah and put him into the pit. But God raised up an ordinary man and lifted up Jeremiah. The rulers threw Jeremiah in the pit to die. Three persons joined together, they put him together. But God raised up 30 persons to lift up Jeremiah. The same king who ordered for Jeremiah to be thrown into the pit, now the same king is telling, please lift up Jeremiah. When you carry the fire of God's word in you, the world may mistreat us, but that is not the end of our lives. Keep alive the fire of the word of God and obey the voice of God and God will take care of us. God will raise us up. The Lord will use the same people who put us down. They will come before us, bowing before God will raise you if you keep alive the fire of the Lord's word. And that's what happened to Jeremiah. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks about not only the word of God, he speaks about the fire of the Holy Spirit. Because we read in John's gospel, chapter 20, verse 19 onwards, when he saw the disciples were frightened and disturbed, he came and he breathed through over them and said, Receive my Holy Spirit. Yes, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, with a fear when they were sitting together, the fire of the Holy Spirit came upon them. When the fire of the Holy Spirit came, the fear disappeared. They were once again, got united under the fire of the Holy Spirit. They started to pray. They started to praise God with the tongues. Yes, the fire of the Holy Spirit makes the frightened people into people of prayer, people of praising and thanking God, people of unity. We read in the, in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 13, when the disciples were filled with that fire, they became courageous and said to the elders and priests, You killed Jesus, the giver of life. But Jesus raised him up. He, Jesus is raised by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says they were all wondering, These people are uneducated fishermen. How boldly they speak. Then they realized that they were with Jesus. Yes, the Holy Spirit gave them not only men of prayer, the fire of the Holy Spirit made them to be united together and work. The fire of the Holy Spirit made them into men and women of courage and boldness. Yes, my dear friends, the same Holy Spirit is coming to us to give us peace. With that Holy Spirit, the broken people received peace. But 
if we don't take care of the fire of the Holy Spirit that is given to us, what will happen? The fire will divide people. We read in the book of Judges, Samson's parents were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they said to Samson, don't do this. Don't go behind, running behind the woman. But Samson did not listen. He divided. He divided. The peace is gone. When we run after the world, when we run after the pleasures of the world, when we run after what the world can give, the fire is put off. The moment the fire of the Holy Spirit is gone, the Bible says in the book of Judges chapter 16 verse 21, the enemy is caught Samson. They plucked away his eyes. They tied him with the chains and they made him to, be, to make circus for them. What a sad story. We have to keep alive the fire of the Holy Spirit. The moment we lose that fire, it will begin to divide. The peace is lost and the family is divided. We read in the life of David and Mishael. David loved the king Saul's daughter, but she was not moving with David. When David was praising God, she made fun of him. She tried to take him away from God and the fire of the Holy Spirit divided husband and wife. David, you, do you stand for God? David stood for God. His wife stood against God and the family was broken into pieces. Yes, the fire of the Holy Spirit will make you to take a decision. Stand for God. That's why Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace, but I have come to give you fire of my spirit to stand for God, to stand for truth. And if anything comes against you, you will stand against it. You will fight against it. Yes, the Holy Spirit is given not only for unity, not only to make us men and women of prayer, not only to be courageous, not only to do great miracles and wonders, but also to say no to the world, to say no to, stand against and fight against the force of evil. So the families will be divided. If one man is standing against God, the men who are filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit, they will stand against them, even though they may be parents, even though they may be wife or husband or children or dear ones. And that's what the fire of the Holy Spirit will do. In the second reading of today, the book of Hebrews 12, it is given, fix your eyes on Jesus. Run towards him. And when you're running towards him, third, many type of sin of the world will pull you. So throw them, keep them where they are and try to move towards God. Fourth, fulfill the purpose for which God has called you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Today, you talk about the three types of fire. Jeremiah was stood with the word of God the fire of the word of God. And he said yes to you, Lord. And he went through suffering. But the fire of your word of God protected him. Lord, you anointed Jesus and the disciples with the fire of the Holy Spirit. They stood for you. And they stood against all those forces. Lord, you anointed St. Paul with the zeal and faith of the fire. The fire of zeal and faith. And he says, with that zeal, we have to fix our eyes on you. We have to run towards you. And we have to throw away all that is not of thine. And fulfill your mission in our lives. We pray, O oh Lord, for all those who listen. May your anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon them. Through the word of God. Through the fire. Through the zeal and faith they have for you. In Jesus' mighty name, I cast away every type of fear, worries, and fill them all with your grace and mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, let them become a mighty witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray.
to you, Father. Amen.